Okay, so we're, we've been talking a lot about how we utilize palpation um, in order to, to do the majority, 99% of our diagnosis. When orthopedic testing are actually useful, as we talked about yesterday, was in cases of macro tissue injury. So macro, macro tissue injury, we're talking about in the knee, ruptures of the ACL, ruptures of the LCL, those types of large uh, injuries. But what we have to remember in the knee is that a, uh, unlike what you read in the in the uh, in textbooks, there's no such thing as an individual ligament rupture. As we said before, the MCL, for example, is not really a, a real structure. It's a structure developed by anatomists who cut it out using their scalpel. <clears throat> in reality, the MCL is just a thickening of the medial capsule. So, for example, if you have a large valgus stress on the knee, you're never going to get a sole MCL tear. It doesn't make, really make any sense. You can get tearing of what we think of of the MCL or that medial thickening, but you will always get um, some other injury, either of the joint capsule itself, or of the posterior medial corner, or of um, some of the muscular tissue, etc. Because the things, the, the barriers to valgus motion of the knee are not solely uh, ligamentous. A lot of it are mus is muscular fascia that connects over the knee. A lot of it is the fascia lata uh, blending into the crural fascia of the leg. Um, if you read the articles by Van der Waal, who talks about the active um, ligaments, or who talks about how there's no real passive ligamentous or passive restrictive structures, the muscles kind of blend into the ligaments, which then continue on as other muscles. So in all positions, you have stability in the knee joints because of the fact that it's not only a passive stabilizer. If we only relied on passive stabilizers, we would be very, very stable in knee extension, but in various degrees of flexion, we wouldn't have that stability. But because we have the ability to tension our passive stabilizers with muscular tissue, we are able to have stability throughout the entire range. Now, on talking of, uh, of actually performing the orthopedic tests, one of the main problems that we see when people are actually performing the orthopedic tests is that they're not doing them aggressively enough to actually try to move bone. A lot of the orthopedic tests for the knee, what we're trying to do is we're either trying to gap a medial knee joint or gap a lateral knee joint or move the tibia on the femur. But when I see people performing, um, a, let's say, a valgus test, what they do is they grab the leg and then they just exert a valgus force slowly to try to feel for medial gapping. Okay? If you just put do a slow valgus test, you'll never actually feel the movement of the joint itself. What we want to do is try to create medial gapping. So if I'm doing a valgus test, I'm going to grab the knee with both hands. I'm going to cut, uh, put a little bit of a bend into the knee. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go into valgus stress and then quickly go into varus stress. Okay, so it's more like a jerky motion that we use. So as I do that, you can feel the clunking on the medial aspect of the knee. If I do this, you don't feel that clunk. So just by putting pressure, you're never really going to appreciate any clunking or opening, gapping of the lateral joint. It's, it's the same thing for if you're doing, or sorry, the medial joint. Same thing if you're doing the lateral collateral ligament or lateral knee stabilizers. If I just push like this, I'm not going to appreciate the gap. But if I take the knee and I jerk the knee into a, a, valg a varus um, stress and then back into valgus, you'll feel the gapping. When we're doing a drawer or a uh, Lachman's test, this way, it's the same thing. A lot of people are grabbing the tricep surrey area with their hand and then they're grabbing the femur very lightly and then they're pulling forward. That's not testing how stable the tibia is on the femur. What that test it tests is the sponginess of the tricep surrey group. So there's a difference between testing and moving muscle and tissue and actually grabbing the bone of the femur of the tibia, grabbing the bone of the femur, and then jerking forward and back. By doing that, you can actually cause osseous um, translation or relative motion between the bones themselves. Okay? <clears throat> it's a similar thing when we're doing, let's bring it into the cervical spine and talk about palpating for motion. You see a lot of people when they're doing cervical palpation, they'll grab the neck here and they'll kind of do a global 
thing like this. You've seen people do this to try to see for the restriction. All that's checking for is your tenseness in the upper cervical and mid cervical musculature. And that's not actually checking for motion of the bone. If you want to check for motion of the bone, first of all, you have to have a way to actually get at the facets. Put your hand into your back, which we talk about in FAT spine. So I'm going to locate my landmarks and my references, and I'm going to get right down to the facet bones themselves. So right, right on the capsules now. From the capsules, what I want to do is I want to appreciate motion of the joints themselves. I don't want to appreciate motion of how the global neck can rotate. I want to segmentally check motion of each and every one of the facet joints. So you see how I'm not bringing the person into complete lateral flexion. I'm not turning the entire neck. I'm just checking for segmental osseous motion. Load and shift for the shoulder. And it's the same concept that I'm talking about with palpating cervical spine movement when you're palpating uh, knee movement like Mike was just doing. The concept here is that you have to imagine that all of the soft tissues have been removed and you're grabbing onto osseous structure and moving osseous structure. Because these, these tests are for osseous structures, right? So I see people do a load and shift test and they're kind of grabbing the deltoid and then they're kind of doing this. So they're checking for the amount of wiggle that a, that a deltoid can, can, uh, can have. Reality, what we need to do is we need to stabilize the acromion. So let's grab the acromion like this. Then we're going to sink our fingers all the way deep until we fe feel the bone of the humeral head. When we feel the bone of the humeral head, then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do relative motion between the two in order to feel movement. So you can see here that I'm actually translating the head of the humerus posteriorly, and then I'm translating the head of the humerus anteriorly. So that's the proper way, and then this is what people do. Okay. So whenever you're palpating, when you're mobilizing, when you're manipulating, it's the exact same thing. You're not manipulating soft tissues. So if you're finding yourself doing, say, rotary cervical manipulations, and you have to put the person into an incredible amount of global lateral flexion and an incredible amount of global rotation, you're not manipulating bone. You're just manipulating tissue. Even though you get cavitation, you're just kind of going and praying for, for the best. If you're actually locking out or getting to the end range of a bone itself, put this hand behind your back. So I've gone in, I've found my facet joints, I've felt osseous restriction. I've contacted, you don't take a soft contact so that you have all of this um, soft tissue bounce. You actually get right onto the bone itself. Laterally flex the bone on or the joint on your finger and then with your hand you're going to rotate the joint. So that's a locked out position for a cervical manipulation. So from here, I will probably go, my thrust amplitude will probably be about that much, as opposed to doing this. Okay? Same for mobilizations. You're not mobilizing soft tissue, so you don't need these global motions to do mobilization. You need very specific, very specific end ranges and very specific mobilization of the osseous structure. Okay? Questions?